Sunzia is one of the most important energy mega projects of the early 21st century and will be the largest clean energy infrastructure project in US history. It addresses the most practical aspects of electricity by not only including the generation, but also the transmission. The project will cost around $11 billion in total and will provide enough power for nearly 3 million American households. But this endeavor comes with several major drawbacks, every one of which we'll cover in today's video. The first important distinction is that this project is actually made up of two separate arms, generation and transmission. Let's start by talking about the generation. New Mexico boasts some of the most abundant constant wind resource in the United States. This project aims to capture some of that resource with over 900 wind turbines in Estancio Valley. In 2023, the company behind the development, Pattern Energy, ordered 674 General Electric 3.6 megawatt turbines and 242 Vestas 4.5 megawatt turbines. This was the largest order ever for this Vestas turbine. The GE turbines utilizing this project have a 154 meter rotor diameter, which means it's roughly equivalent to the length of one and a half football fields. Sunzia is spread out over a million acres on a rectangle of land roughly 80 by 30 miles. GE's turbine array covers nearly 45 by 25 miles, and Vestas covers the rest. It's important to highlight the inherent challenges of the site primarily due to the considerable variation in topography at such a scale. From an engineering standpoint, developing a single product that can accommodate all of these diverse locations poses a significant challenge. Utilizing computer modeling, precise locations for each turbine are determined. Sunzia stands as a colossal undertaking by nearly any standard. Pattern executives project that Sunzia will produce sufficient power to supply 3 million households, surpassing the energy output of the largest currently operational wind farm, the 1 gigawatt Great Prairie Wind Project in Texas by threefold. Remarkably, only six power plants across the nation boast a capacity greater than 3.5 gigawatts, and that's from all generation sources combined. This project will be a major help for the goal of clean energy in the United States. Based on the number of households it can power, this will cover a bit over 1% of the US demand, which is a remarkable amount of clean energy. Sunzia Transmission is a 550-mile transmission line between central New Mexico and south-central Arizona, with the capacity to transport 3 gigawatts or 3,000 megawatts of this clean energy. Outside of these lines, there will also be 10 substations, multiple operations and maintenance facilities, and more than 100 miles of lines connecting the turbines to the transmission lines. The transmission will run at 525 kilovolts of high-voltage direct current, or HVDC, using DC for transmission is a relatively new method, but reduces both losses and saves cost over longer distances. Typically, once the transmission lines get longer than a couple hundred miles, it becomes more cost effective to use direct current than alternating current. The installation of transmission lines has become a contentious issue nationwide, as divergent environmental and local community interests collide. The NIMBY or Not In My Backyard syndrome often proves effective in stalling or stopping large-scale infrastructure endeavors spanning multiple jurisdictions. However, the generation of substantial solar and wind energy predominantly thrives in sparsely populated, less vulnerable regions, making the transmission of power to urban hubs more of the concern. These transmission projects, pivotal for enabling the shift toward clean energy, frequently encounter hurdles in acquiring permits or approvals. In Maine, conflicting interests have been at odds over the construction of transmission lines aimed at connecting Canadian hydropower to consumers in New England. Even the Sunzia transmission route underwent alterations in 2015 to address concerns raised by the US Department of Defense and White Sands Missile Range. We find ourselves at a pivotal juncture where the pace of renewable energy expansion has outpaced the development of new transmission infrastructure. This underscores the need for the renewable energy sector to focus equally on the critical aspect of transmission, and the transmission for this massive project is being built by Quanta Infrastructure while Hitachi Energy is supplying the HVDC lines and equipment. 
Pattern Energy is a private American company that owns, develops, and operates renewable energy projects. They are also one of the world's largest private renewable energy companies, with 28 utility-scale facilities in the US, Canada, and Japan. The company projects include wind, solar, transmission, and energy storage, and today have an operating capacity of nearly 6 gigawatts or 6,000 megawatts across North America. The previously mentioned $11 billion figure is made up of the following. The financing includes $8.8 .8 billion in construction and term facilities, as well as a $2.25 billion tax equity term loan facility. Pattern Energy utilizes a tax equity to convert the tax credits associated with their renewable energy project into cash. This financing mechanism allows them to monetize the project's tax credit attributes by selling or assigning them to investors in exchange for funding. The Clean Power Alliance in November 2023 approved a 575 megawatt 15-year power purchase agreement with Pattern Energy to buy power from the wind farm. I'll explain a bit more what this means in the next section, but unfortunately that contract is not public, so we have no way of knowing all the financial numbers for the length of the contract. And in case you're curious, landowners whose property falls along the planned route of the transmission lines will not be left out. They can expect compensation for allowing the easements on their land. This typically involves negotiation with the developer, Pattern Energy, to establish a fair price based on factors like the easement easement size and potential impacts. Landowners may receive a one-time payment for an easement or even sell the affected land outright to the developer. So here's the overall positive. The Sunzia Wind and Transmission Project promises to deliver over $1 billion in estimated direct economic benefits to governments, communities, schools, and private landowners across Arizona and New Mexico, while creating more than 2,000 construction jobs and up to 150 permanent jobs. Now to the negative realities of the project, and unfortunately there are quite a few. First, only about 500 megawatts of this power will be used by New Mexico, with the rest being transmitted to Arizona and mostly California. The Clean Power Alliance, who I mentioned before, is an electricity provider for Los Angeles and Ventura counties. While this will make New Mexico the largest exporter of wind power in the country, it also means that all of this transmission infrastructure running through the state will provide minimal local benefit. And this runs directly into the next major drawback. Obviously, from looking at this video, you'll see that plenty of natural land will be used for development. While it will most likely be a net benefit for the country during the energy transition, New Mexico locals are the ones sacrificing their land, and tribes, archaeologists, and environmentalists have been very vocal about their concerns throughout every stage of this process, claiming that the valley is one of the most intact, prehistoric, and historical landscapes in southern Arizona and New Mexico. But just recently, a federal judge rejected a request to stop work on the transmission line. The construction is set to be complete with power to be delivered sometime in 2026, and although nameplate generation is listed at 3,500 megawatts, it's impractical to think that this is anywhere near what the average output will be. In fact, in America, wind turbines are only around 35% efficient on average. However, it is important to note that these are newer models of wind turbines, and the fact that they are much larger makes them consistently access a higher point in the wind stream, providing more efficiency. Over the past decade, the United States has made significant progress in decarbonizing its power grid and closing coal plants and extensively developing new wind and solar facilities. By the end of 2022, these renewable sources collectively contributed to nearly 15% of US electricity generation. However, for effective decarbonization, the country will require more projects of comparable magnitude. Sunzia's scale is poised to surpass existing limitations on large-scale initiatives, setting a crucial precedent for future endeavors in the realm. And even if you're not a fan of the new green infrastructure, you should be a fan of all the long-term positives in terms of economic growth that this will help foster for the United States. I make all types of engineering related videos, mostly surrounding major infrastructure projects across the world. These videos generally take me anywhere from 20 to 25 hours to make, so I would appreciate any support that you can give. Either way, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.